Oh, good morning to my West Coast friends and good afternoon to my East Coast friends as well. Thank you for joining the today's call. In the our series of Tech Insights from Brainware, we are going to talk about B2B transformations today. Along with that, we are making out how the B2B transformations could be successful utilizing the Adobe Commons. We all are aware about what is a B2C segment and because of the COVID, we understood how much it has affected the B2C of the digitization presence also. But when we look at the statistics, then B2B market is a six times more than valuable than B2C. But we always underestimate them. We have lots of people from across the different industry, across the different verticals and the different geographies as well in today's call. So in this, we also understand, they all understand that, okay, how the B2B market and the B2B customers are important. Now, when we look at the B2B market growth, what we are looking at, if you look at the big business objective, you're looking at a growth revenue, you want to reduce the cost or improve the operation efficiencies, or you want to do in increase the customer loyalty as well. Now, when you look at this, from a digital objectives. So in that, how you can increase your digital sales, how you can improve the digital operations and efficiencies, and then ultimately how you can create an omni-channel seamless experience for your customers. So that's how your business objectives gets converted to your digital objective as well. So we'll be talking more about our B2B aspects in our today's call and to talk more about it, we have Shannon Hen. Uh, she's a senior product marketing manager from Adobe with us. Thank you, Shannon, for joining us. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here today. Um, as, as you mentioned, uh, I'm a, a product marketing uh, manager. I manage part of the team for commerce for Adobe. And I've actually worked on Adobe Commerce for about uh, a little over eight years now. Uh, prior to that, I was also in the commerce and hosting space working with SMB companies, and uh, I've had a, a range of other tech um, marketing and product marketing roles. So very, very happy to be here today. Thank you, Shannon, for joining us. We have Chintan Shah, CEO of BrainWire Infotech. He's a veteran into retail industry and the technology geek as well. Thank you, Chintan, for joining us. Thank you, Maharshi. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, this is Chintan Shah, and I'm the CEO and founder of BrainWire. In BrainWire, we focus on digital transformation and digital transformation consulting. And that's what we have done over the years. In last uh, eight years of journey, uh, where we have created 11 countries with the 20 global offices, close to 1,500 brainers work with us. 95% customer retention and retail has been a forefront on our digital transformation journey. AI ML blockchain is something which we focus on. Uh, our growth has been organic and inorganic. We have acquired a couple of companies, one into data analytics, uh, easy analytics, and that's how we have grown so far. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, Mr. Kevin. So we have Tent and Table, an amazing customer with whom we are working for more than eight, seven to eight years. But their business transformation and business journey has been amazing that they are started their journey around 25, 30 years back with a traditionally having a renting, rental shop. And from there, moving that to a digital journey and adapting to all the digital technology, especially a B2C and a B2B has been amazing. And Kevin has been a forefront with the company as a chief operating officer and a chief information officer. Kevin, over to you. Well, thank you for that introduction, Chinton. And it's uh, really nice to be here today. And I'm happy to present on our company's digital journey. A little bit about Tent and Table. Tent and Table uh, imports and distributes pretty much party and event rental equipment, those items that you would see at weddings and graduation parties and birthdays and really any event needing to be curated. Uh, we do, as you can see on the screen, inflatables. We do tents, tables, chairs, generators, and all of those accessories that would you would see in a normal party and event rental business uh, supply company. 
Uh, right now, we're using Adobe Commerce, and within the Adobe Commerce ecosystem, we have uh, four main websites. You see them on the screen, Tent and Table, Party Tents Direct, Pogo Bounce House, and Zoom Blowers. We also have a dedicated sales team of about six salespeople, a dedicated customer service team of about seven customer service agents. Um, we have uh, three fully functioning warehouses, and we also sell on all the major marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, and uh, Walmart. So again, I'm happy to be here and, and really excited to share with you my journey and, and working with these amazing people at BrainBuyer and Adobe. Thank you so much for Kevin for joining us. Uh, and thank you for our audience as well uh, for joining us uh, in a such a beautiful morning. Now, when we talk about our today's agenda, uh, we'll be starting with the hierarchy of needs. What is the overall requirements from a B2B business? What are the business challenges that people face? And then combining everything, how the Adobe Commerce can be the perfect ideal solutioning for this. Now, uh, we would like to first start with the needs out there. So Kevin, can you share some glimpse on it that any of the B2B business, what is the hierarchy of needs? What they exactly needs? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's very well represented on the screen. Um, basically, you know, any business trying to get into the B2B marketplace survival presence, that's key. Um, you, you need to be able to start gaining market share. Um, you need to certainly have your niche and you also need to, you know, be able to survive and, and grow, you know, after that, um, once you at least have a presence, you're looking at your processes, right? You're looking at ordering um, in terms of ordering supplies and an, an ordering inventory. What is your process for reordering fulfillment? What are you doing about customer retention? Um, then, you know, after that, it's really uh, simplified services, customer loyalty. You're looking to add those values, you know, after, after uh, sale values, right? Like in the beginning, you're just so concerned about getting the sale as you evolve and mature, you're more interested in about giving good customer service, good post-sale customer service, and certainly in the B2B market, customer loyalty is key. Um, after that, I think after that gets stabilized, you really want to grow your market share, your wallet share. You really want to um, uh, may have a larger, more secure presence. Uh, start to diversify your B2B business. I think a lot of people get into B2B and they'll see that one particular market makes up a majority of their business, the 80-20 rule. And so you really wanna to start to grow that and become stronger. Then after that, and this is what I really love to focus on, being an innovation pace setter, um, looking, looking not behind or even in the present, look ahead. You know, always start with the end in mind. Where do you wanna be a year from now, two years from now? And what is out there that can help you get there? And always be looking to set your business ahead of your competitors and challenge yourself in the technology field to be better than you are right now. And, and that takes a lot. It takes great ownership, it takes great people around you, but more importantly, you know, it takes a, a great development partner like BrainVire and a wonderful, wonderful platform like Adobe Commerce. Thank you, Kevin. You really converted your Maslow's hierarchies to really hierarchy of a B2B business out there. And specifically the phase one that you mentioned is a bare minimum need of any of the B2B business. Now, like uh, how they need to serve their customers. So phase one plays a very important role for them. Now we understood that, okay, what is the need of a B2B business? Uh, Chintan, you might have consulted lots of retail companies and the B2B companies as well. Tenten Table being one of your uh, major business, uh, com customer out there, can you share some glimpse the overall buying journey of a tent and table customers? Definitely. Uh, buying journey has gone through a lot of changes. Now, during COVID, of course, it has impacted the entire world and it has changed and it has increased the importance of awareness and the discovery, which are the two key pillars initially that you need to make sure that the people are aware about your product, your brand, so it means that you have to reach out to all the social media channels. You have to reach out through all different email banners and all different channels. And you need a platform which can give you an easy way to make sure that your content is available and you able to reach out from an awareness point of view. After the awareness, I mean, the users are smarter. So then they start with the discovery. 
so that's where the discovery starts that like you know that first is the brand awareness and then the people get into a research of discovery whether they when they get into a brand they want to study a little bit more about it you come into marketplaces as kevin was mentioning that they are on multiple marketplaces social media advertising banner ads blogs search engine optimization and again all of those things are very important because it has to tied up with your platform so that is something which you have to always keep in mind the platform that you selected should be such that it should give a collective analytical data for your research awareness and, and discovery and then comes the research that customer become very smart so before they purchase lot of research comes into picture so research is first about the competitors competitors price and everyone love to get into the amazon and compare the price and just for the comparison sake of the comparison then it gets into the reviews rating feedback how customer talks about you what type of shipping method you have what type of deliverables you have what type of payment plan because if you are going into heavy equipment type of things people are also looking at those type of things so that's where the research comes into the picture so you need to make sure that all of those things are available within your platform but at the same time it has to be available to the customer so that they able to understand that what we are offering is better or different then the other platform and then comes the moment that you want a customer to make into the purchase decision and in the purchase decision of course i mean first and foremost you want to make sure that the quick ordering form is something which is important that people quickly order at the same time it's a payment option subscription option reordering sub- next uh, purchase plan you get into a entire order flow management also get into a different payment options if you are giving different payment option solutions and then you also wanted to if you have physical stores you also wanted to make sure that the store locators things are available so that either people can do a pick up if they want to because if they are in hurry if not at least they are aware that next time if i have to purchase something there is a nearby store available i can look into it and then last but not the least comes is the post purchase and that's where the retention of the customer loyalty increasing your basket size giving them the add on services selling them the warranties and making sure that that customer is segmented in such a way that you able to reach out to them at the right point of time with the right set of product and right set of offers and that's what uh, the buying journey of a uh, typically customer works and tent and table has been no difference than others and more or less in the same way platform plays very important role because in in this entire journey you also wanted to make sure that all of this data is collected and there is a detailed analytics done on top of that so that you can segment the data and use it in the right way so that's where i think the adobe plays a vital role from a platform point of view thank you chunitar we typically always focus on the purchase portion of your journey we never knew that awareness and discover does have play a very vital role into this overall buying journey as well. and the post purchase we always see that okay that's a, uh, one of the major pain point but we never find a solution that can help us so that's where we will be looking forward more to hear from uh, from shannon and kevin uh, moving further so kevin chintan mentioned about the buying journey you mentioned about the needs as well but can you help us more about what is a typical b2b dynamics and if you can specifically mention about the business dynamics of a tent and table into the b2b segment uh yeah sure so you know your your typical b2b dynamics um i think from a global perspective is that b2b customers usually require a little bit more management than your b2c customers uh typically your b2c customers uh just want the ability to go on to a website find a product click it buy it and then get customer service uh should there be any issue but they're pretty much self sufficient um your b2b customer whether it's because of the complexity of your business or because you you know by by design you're trying to establish that relationship right you're always trying to establish the relationship with your b2b customer because that helps with loyalty and repurchasing So there's always this management aspect uh with your B2B business that's different than B2C. Um there's also, you know, you, you have to understand that uh you you have to go where people are in terms of shopping. You can't force them to shop a certain way. You have to be flexible. You have to have multiple sales channels. You know, some people 
like the uh, information rich sites where everything's a la carte and they can figure out if it's a good deal for product and shipping. Um, some people like more niche sites where the products are less, um, they, they fit a particular role, maybe the shipping's free. Some people like to be on Amazon, some people like to be on eBay. So you really do kind of have to go uh, where the, the customers are and kind of meet them on their terms. One thing that I th think is definitely um, important for B2B customers is the ability to uh, give them quotations, the ability to have that conversation with them um, concerning, you know, the products that they want and what they should they should be thinking about and what the price is going to be and what the shipping is going to be and present that into in a way where it's simple for them to get that information and even easier for them to check out. So we always prefer an immediate checkout option with any quotation. We require it. You know, you have some certain compliance issues with that that you need to follow and having a really good e-commerce engine um, and having the ability to do that from your e-commerce platform to me is is critical. Um, after that, you know, uh, pretty much for B2C, they, they see it, they buy it, they pay for it. B2B, that's not true. You have to have very flexibility in their payment methods. You have to have the ability to give lines of credit. You have to have the ability to do PO purchasing. You have to have the ability to take deposits. Um, again, you have to have a more flexible uh, payment system when it comes to B2B, and you need the infrastructure that supports that, that can report on that, um, to be able to track that. Um, you know, you need customer side approval workflows. You know, you, you have to have situations where you're able to work with your customer and have them approve of uh, how that particular deal is going to happen, be able to log that approval and then be able to act on it. Um, we also find with the B2B marketplace, there is a more com complex configurable product uh, need there. Um, consumers, again, are more willing to go in and kind of pick the products they want and add them to the cart. B2B customers, because they tend to be in a certain um, niche or a certain business, uh, they expect to see certain products packaged together. They don't want to go around and hunt on your site. For example, for us, you know, uh, we sell inflatables. We sell inflatables and they include blowers and sometimes they include other add-ons because that's what our customers expect and they're all there on the same page and they're also able to be selected from um, options, you know, different options from light duty to heavy duty. And that's what our customers expect, so that's what we want to provide them. Um, customer specific pricing and catalogs. Again, it's I think it, this really comes down to kind of that loyalty aspect and creating that relationship. You know, you want to be able to understand who your customer is and, or who your customers are and be able to have, um, you know, customer groups, VIP groups, gold groups, platinum groups, uh, uh, more specific groups based on industry, because you always want to be able to offer, I think, specific pricing based on groups. I think it makes the customer feel like uh, they're special, which they are. And it also um, gives you the flexibility to not have to get so involved in pricing negotiations if they're getting the appropriate discount for their group. Um, and same thing with catalogs, being able to offer branded catalogs or catalogs specific to the types of products uh, that that customer is interested in. Um, anytime you can give the customer that personal feel when they're on, their, on your website or that branded feel where they feel like everything's being catered towards them. That's a huge plus in the B2B world. Uh, product mix, you know, regional mix. We don't we don't do too much of, of that um, in terms of regions, but we do do that in terms of, of industry. So we have our inflatable customers, our tent customers, our table customers. And, you know, the last thing that you have here, single source of truth. That really affects every aspect of your business. And I'm sure we have people out there who are deeply involved in their businesses. And they know that whether you're in the warehouse or accounting or sales or customer service or purchasing, you need one place to go to have all of the correct and proper information for your products. If you have different information on Amazon than you have on your website, than you have on eBay, that you have you know, on your warehouse side, it causes nothing but problems. So having that one single source of truth on product information is critical and key to any B2B function because the one thing the B2B customer needs is accurate information on every aspect of the product. That sounds amazing. And I have met with lots of 
B2B and retail companies where you know, like uh, all their sales team hustle between the price quotations, line of credits and everything. They just keep going here and there and ultimately wasting the time. So now we understood the journeys, we understood the dynamics as well, we understood the needs. So we wanted to come to Shannon now that okay, how the digital experience can be a strategic advantage and overall how the Adobe Commerce helps into this. Great. Yeah, thank you. You know, so many of the, the, the issues that Kevin raised are, are ones that we think about on a day-to-day -day basis and have really taken the time to build into the core of our product. Uh, so Adobe Commerce, um, if you're not that familiar with it, is a recognized leader by both Gartner and Forrester in digital commerce. And, you know, what we do bring to market is a very comprehensive set of capabilities that really cover every step of the purchase process that we've just been kind of walking through from that discovery all the way through to uh, long-term engagement with your customers. And um, one of the kind of unique aspects, I think, of the Adobe solution is just its flexibility, right? We have the ability to support both B2B and B2C customers. Uh, we can support different types of business models like marketplaces, selling services, uh, setting up subscriptions for your customers. Uh, and we also have a, a headless architecture, which means in kind of a, you know, not to get overly technical here, but it gives you a lot of flexibility on how you build out your front end experience of your site. Uh, so there's just a lot of control that you have. Uh, we also bring some really great innovation uh, to the product, including AI powered personalization uh, to really help you create that better buying experience. That sounds amazing. You have done lots of, you know, like uh, intelligent tools, AI embedded into that. That's a, a technology innovations that, that you have done. Uh, now let's move towards a couple of uh, use cases. Like we talked about the technological solutions and everything. Now we wanted to hear from a Kevin, what is the ground reality? What exactly the B2B business needs? What is the day-to-day -day needs are there? And then how ultimately Adobe Commerce helps to achieve it? Yeah, sure. So, you know, one of the challenges that we always have is, you know, effective and efficient communication with the B2B customer in regards to quoting, pricing and checkout, right? Because um, you really want to, we always wanted to create a scenario where the customer could be in the website and basically shopping from the website while simultaneously communicating with the sales rep and reviewing quotations and approving quotations and negotiating price all from the website, but also giving the sales rep the ability to do it from their CRM program. And, you know, prior to Adobe Commerce, um, we, we struggled with it. Uh, we've had various iterations of it, um, but Adobe Commerce with their uh, B2B module, which is very robust, has really given us kind of a one-stop solution um, and I see like Robert's on here wanting, wanting some new insights. And I'll tell you, uh, one of the insights that I can give you is that if you are in the B2B world and you're looking for a great way to communicate with your customer in real time and do quotations and give them seamless checkout, you really want to look at the Adobe um, B2B portal because it now gives us the ability to have the customer completely within Magento where all the products are, where their entire profile is, where they can actually build their cart and communicate with sales reps in real time while we have the sales reps in their CRM adjusting quotes, adjusting prices, finally coming to an agreement, giving it final approval, and the customer can go right into their shopping cart and check out just like a, a an online click and buy. It's, it's really seamless. It's very private and protected. And it also gives us a nice log of all the communications and everything that happened. So from a reporting standpoint, it's, it's really ideal. Beyond that, the other thing that we've um, kind of really always struggled with is creating kind of these, um, you know, these personalized catalogs and personalized pricing and content for customers. Um, you know, I'll definitely let others speak more on this than me. I think they have better insights, but um, uh, we really have wanted to move towards more personalization for each individual that comes on the site, especially when they're part of a larger business and give them that customized feel. Yeah, you know, Kevin, um, 
you've done a great job of talking about the value of uh, the quoting capabilities. And I think if we just take a step back, you know, it's B2B businesses really do have a unique set of needs when it comes to selling online, right? Uh, just the, the nature of the business is, is more complex as we've been talking about compared to B2C selling. And so one of the things that we did when we built in our B2B capabilities is to support that quoting that you talked about. And it really is a complete closed loop solution where a, a buyer can place items in the cart, request a quote, the, uh, the sales rep that quote is routed to that sales rep so they can respond immediately, uh, making pricing adjustments, maybe adding additional products to the cart. That negotiation can go on back and forth fully through the website, and then the customer can just check out. So it's like, it's a fabulous really efficient experience on both sides. Uh, and then, as you also mentioned, pricing and catalogs uh, are also, it can be a pretty sensitive issue in B2B, right? You typically will negotiate uh, contracts with customers and they have a certain set of uh, products, a certain assortment, and a certain uh, pricing for all those products that you need to be able to honor through the digital channel uh, and have the exact same kind of pricing that you have uh, as you as you do uh, in the offline channel. So with our uh, ability to have um, custom catalogs and price pricing that we assign to individual customers or group, groups of customers is just a fabulous way to make sure that your customers are getting a personalized experience and one that's, you know, lines up with their contractual agreements with you. The other thing I'll add uh, that we do for B2B customers is that we also provide a full set of self-service account management capabilities, right? So this means that your buyers uh, can conveniently go in and do things like manage uh, the, the employees who can purchase through the site, right? You can set up order approval rules. How much money is someone allowed to spend uh, before uh, a manager needs to sign off on that purchase agreement? Uh, they can also go in there and uh, track their orders. Uh, they can look at their shipping status and they can also see a full uh, history for all the purchasing across the company. So they get a really good holistic view. And the best part about this is that they are not calling you to get all these different questions answered, right? They're able to take care of that on their own through the site at their convenience, you know, often at uh, maybe a time that's not even in your normal business hours. So it's really a win-win on both sides. Yeah, that's that's a, a great point. I, um, and I almost, and I, I should have mentioned that, but the time-saving aspect of the B2B portal has been huge because most uh, companies out there have chat functions and one of the things that we've been able to do is, you know, keyword off uh, certain certain chat phrases and clue them right into their login and their B2B portal and let them know all the features. And um, it really has been a huge time saving consideration for our customer service team and let us focus on more income producing activities. Oh, that's great to hear. Perfect. Sounds good. And on top of what this would be that, okay, all the features have become a native of Adobe Commerce, whatever the Shannon has mentioned. So that's the, you know, like amazing things out there. Now, uh, we understood the basic use cases that happens on a day to day basis, but what are other more interesting or what are more uh, insights, Kevin, that you can share about the use cases? That's a need, you know, like we talked about the phase two of the B2B uh, business. So can you talk more about those use cases? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. And this is the really exciting part of uh, why we switched to Adobe Commerce and um, why we decided to make that investment is just really the capability of creating an entire branded experience for our B2B customers. And what I mean by that is, you know, Adobe Commerce gives us the ability through Page Builder to, um, based on your login and, and based on your profile to present products and present um, pages and widgets and information to you in a very specific way that caters towards what you're looking for and what your business is and branded accordingly. We find that customers really enjoy that. They like when they come to our site and log in that what they see is their top sellers or their most viewed products or their most purchased products or products that are within their industry with their branding on it um, and it's a completely personalized experience. And that to me has been a real game changer in the B2B uh, community. You know, the, the ability to do that through the page builder has been huge. The other thing is um, 
you know, with multi-site, uh, again, um, we offer four websites. Uh, we need the ability to effectively manage those websites because many of them share the same products but different pricing, uh, different presentation. Um, you know, to have Adobe Commerce be a really robust product information manager with the ability to segment the look of every product on each specific website independently is huge. So that's another factor that we enjoy and we kind of go back to that single source of truth. It really does allow us to have Adobe as our single source of truth. We identified, um, you know, the Hispanic marketplace in terms of uh, party and event rental has exploded in the last five years, exploded. And we really recognized an opportunity there um, to uh, better communicate and better associate with our, you know, Hispanic customers who have increasingly made up a much larger portion of our overall customers. And by having that multi-language support site, it now gives us the ability and something we're currently working on to create that complete uh, Spanish language site uh, catered towards our Spanish speaking B2B customers, and even B2C customers. Uh, again, giving them a more personal and comfortable experience when they come shop with us, huge value. And then of course, uh, the big thing, PWA, uh, being able to have uh, you know, PWA, the responsiveness, the speed, the connectivity, all the advantages that PWA gives you as a storefront framework has been huge. Uh, it's great to hear that, Kevin. Um, yeah, I, you know, just to kind of reiterate some of the things you mentioned, uh, we know that, you know, having a successful uh, B2B commerce site means that you need to refresh the content on there regularly. You need to uh, target it to the right users. It needs to be relevant and, uh, and engaging. And so we tried to pull together a, a basket of tools to make it really easy for marketers and merchandisers to do just that without necessarily having to bring in a lot of IT talent to do it. So you mentioned page builder. That's our, our content, our page page building content management kind of tool. Uh, and there it's really a, a very simple drag and drop interface that allows uh, your team members to build out that content and use it across your site. Uh, we also uh, have some AI powered product recommendation capabilities uh, that allow you to show products that are personalized for an individual buyer, but also mm -hmm. there are other algorithms where you can choose to show products that are maybe the most popular, have the highest conversion rate, um, or are even visually similar to other products. Uh, and this is a great way for you to tailor your experience and also help to drive sales, drive the basket size by making these additional recommendations. Um, and as uh, Kevin mentioned, you know, Adobe Commerce really um, handles some of the more complex situations like multi-site multi-brand, multi-geography setups. So if you have a business where you have multiple brands that you need to manage sites for, if you have, if you're selling across different uh, countries, different audiences that may have different language uh, necessities, like in the case of Tent and Table, uh, it's a great tool for you because you can easily manage all of those different experiences from the same back end. And then for those of you who are selling uh, globally, uh, Adobe Commerce supports, uh, you know, multiple currencies, different tax policies, uh, different uh, payment um, uh, providers and gateways, uh, and different languages. So, right, you, you can really, uh, it it's, can be fully localized to those needs. And then um, just the final thing on uh, PW. PWA, yes, we're super excited about that that technology and, and we've embraced it fully because it really allows you as a B2B company to have a fast app-like uh, mobile web experience. And we're providing you with the developer tools to build that out so that you can give your customers the ability to access your site easily when they are on the go. And I know in many cases, you have customers who maybe work from a different job site. Maybe you're in, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a plumber Always. or a contractor and things like that. Or you have folks who are just, you know, on the go. Maybe you have a sales rep who needs to be able to access your, your site and catalog while visiting with a client. All that's capable uh, through our, our mobile experience. 
And and just a real quick, sorry. Um, and hello, Joseph from Nigeria. I'm glad you're I'm glad you joined us. Um, so real quick, I just want to say this too, and this is for kind of the other maybe CIOs out there or project managers or people who deal day to day with this. You know that to get uh, complete functionality for your business, you're dealing with a lot of technologies. That's a lot of companies, a lot of bridges, a lot of issues, a lot of patches, a lot of conflicts, a lot of the things that go along with having a robust e-commerce ecosystem. I can honestly say that with Adobe Commerce, one of the biggest advantages to us was we were able to replace, I think, 11 independent third-party processes that we were paying for that now Adobe handles natively. And that is such a huge advantage for so many reasons. First of all, it just works better. Secondly, no bridge to deal with that can break. Thirdly, if there is an issue, I have one company to go to to fix it. So uh, not only did that save us money, it increased greater functionality. So uh, um, that, that's a huge value added for us. And I think others out there can certainly relate to that. Definitely, yes, that sounds really interesting. Chintan, you wanted to add any kind of your technical aspects into this? Yeah, I mean, uh, so definitely, I mean, what Kevin is mentioning and what Shannon was saying is something that Adobe, I mean, we have been associated with Adobe for long and the, in last uh, two, two and a half years, the things that have changed in Adobe and the way in which that product and the features have started coming has really put them into top and from a Gartner point of view or from the Forrester point of view. And definitely like, you know, that I will say that search was one of the key aspects, which definitely has mm -hmm. changed in terms of Adobe that how the search is working and search is the number one thing that every customer is looking and uh, Adobe, we proudly say that with Adobe search, the elastic basic elastic search, you have amazing results that you can do it. PWS studio is a very great example not only in terms of developing the app the thing, the thing is that to test the market because many customers say that i want to do a mobile app first just to test the market and then i want to get into maybe a native app or something in the future so that is where like you know that with the natively available pwa with a minimum efforts if you can do it customer loves that so i think yeah those are some of the key aspects that technically that adobe has changed really and that has put them into a right at the top. Awesome. Thank you for sharing business, technology, and the product insights out there at the one location. So we talked about lots of use cases and Kevin mentioned how amazingly things has worked out for him. So Kevin, you can, can you mention certain things that, okay, after implementing Adobe Commerce, what kind of uh, out results that you have generated? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of different KPIs that we measure that, you know, um, I can honestly say across the board, the major KPIs have all increased. We've, um, you know, we've we found uh, certainly um, the top one being total revenue and profitability has increased uh, at, a, at a major percentage for us since instituting Adobe Commerce. Um, you know, uh, I would say the other metrics that are the other outcomes that are important to us too are transparency and reporting, um, being able to evaluate, you know, stock on hand versus stock coming in, being able to look at, you know, customer segmentation, customer buying habits, um, being able to look at, uh, you know, top selling products, also top viewed products and be able to get that data within real time. Um, most of our major KPIs, like I said, have increased and we've seen uh, much better outcomes from Adobe Commerce than our previous e-commerce solution. That's amazing ROI that you're created from a solutioning. Chintan, you being a, you know, like a retail veteran, you might have implemented so many solutions across the different industry, across the geographics as well. You might have seen success and the failures as well. So what do you think? What are the common mistakes that companies does while implementing the B2B solutions? So definitely, I mean, uh, being into digital transformation journey with the customers, we have seen many times like, you know, either get into a customer where there is a wrong deployment model, which has been selected, uh, a wrong platform, which has been selected, or they have opt out from a turnkey marketplace solution. 
and then the struggle start that now they want to do the customization or they want to reach out what is the next options and I can go on and on and on and we have multiple stories and the case studies of that but I will not get into a detail of that failure to integrate with the existing system which is one of the key aspects that if you have a separate accounting system which you are using or if you have a separate CRM solution or if you have a separate like you know order fulfillment OMS solution you want to make sure that it can be integrated right I mean and not paying attention to the scalability which is one of the key aspects that many businesses has grown significantly during the COVID time or during this digital journey of last few years so scalability is something which is very important that your platform should be able to support and we have seen that remarkably well with Adobe that being an open source architecture integrating with a different system become very easy and like you know any customer when they ask that hey I have this type of system which is very custom built 20 years back and now I'm looking at API integration I said no problem as long as you have XML or a CSV or as long as you have APIs that is good enough and we can make sure that the rest of the things can handle from a Magento and Adobe point of view. So yes, I mean, this is something which is important uh, that from a deployment, I mean, the common mistakes that you need, people need to keep in mind is uh, like, you know, these are the four pillars that they have to keep in mind when they are looking at solution selection from a platform point of view. Yeah, that's that's a really good pointers that you have mentioned. And always the failures are amazing kind of a learning lessons for the new CIOs or the people who wants to implement, they are already aware what not to do. Now, yeah, 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 I, I, I made all those mistakes. I, those <laughs> I think it's great so. advice from what we hear from customers. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, every, every, every single one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have shown the amazing ROI as well. So, you know, like, those are worthwhile mistakes to do. You, you, you learn, you learn from them. Yeah. Yeah. Prior, prior, prior to Chin's help. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you, Kevin, being so nice. So we heard about the mistakes. We heard about the ROX. Now we wanted to hear from Shannon that uh, whatever things that we looked at so far, what is ideal Adobe solution that we are looking at? How that perfect matchmaking that is happening with the Adobe Commerce solutions? Sure. You know, yeah, we've been talking a lot about, uh, you know, some specific capabilities, but it's always good to take a step back and, and kind of look at the overarching solution and hopefully that this image kind of helps you with that. Uh, a couple of things I just want to point out is that, like Tintin was saying, um, we know that digital commerce doesn't live on its own and it needs to connect to your existing business systems, your ERP system, CRM, and so forth. And that's why if you look at the base of this uh, this diagram here, it, you'll see APIs, right? We have a full set of APIs for our, cap for our product to, to be able to connect connect to those other business systems to pull in the pro customer product pricing, uh, shipping data, whatever it might be, uh, and share it back and forth um, so that you have a, a truly integrated solution. You can also see that we have a full set of, uh, you know, a really rich set of commerce services that are part of the core product. And this is the kind of functionality we've been talking about. Everything from, you know, your product catalog to promotional capabilities, search, uh, pricing management, and also lots of quick ordering op options for your customers. So it makes it really easy for them to buy from you. Uh, so a rich set of commerce capabilities. And then on top of that, I mentioned before that we have a headless architecture and that basically means is that we have another set of uh, GraphQL APIs that allow you to connect this commerce engine, all these commerce services to whatever kind of front end experience you might want to have. Of course, we include one, uh, the, a great storefront that you can build from. Uh, we also have uh, PWA Studio, what we, which is what we mentioned before, which will allow you to create your own progressive web application for a, that better mobile experience. But if you want to use Adobe Experience Manager or some other kind of custom front end, that's also an option that you can take. Once again, you're in control, a lot of flexibility on your part. But that kind of gives you just a sense of the overall solution. Uh, and so um, maybe we can move on to the next slide and we can talk a little bit more about some of the other things you can do. Uh, you know, I think of uh, Adobe Commerce as really being a, a foundational solution that you can build on. Uh, it has a lot of robust capabilities. It can really 
grow with your business. Uh, and as you mature and become more sophisticated in kind of the strategies you want to deploy, it can grow with you. But there are also some other Adobe solutions that you can pull in and use with it uh, to give you some other additional uh, both uh, experience capabilities as well as operational capabilities. And some of the, the big ones that we see include ex Adobe Experience Manager, extremely powerful content management solution. You can use that to build out your site content and it's going to have some more sophisticated capabilities and, and tooling around um, workflow processes help you with some of that localization if you're building sites for multiple markets uh, and help you create really immersive experiences across the cu customer journey. Uh, and what's interesting is that we have it so that you can just pull the uh, the commerce, the, the Adobe Commerce catalog right into the AEM tool to build out new content wow. and pages. So it's a, it's a nice integration. Um, we also have a lot of customers who use Adobe Analytics with commerce to better track that um, user behavior and really to, to also gather up customer segmentation uh, data so they can do better segmentation and targeting across touch points. And then we also have some customers who use Adobe Target and they may use it for, you know, pers really deep personalization across their sites and other campaigns or also for A-B testing and uh, multivariate testing. So, uh, you know, really um, Adobe Commerce is a great foundation and there are other ways to, to really build on it if you're looking for additional capabilities. Sure, you know, like the Adobe's overall family solutions, it looks like a deadly combination for any of the companies out there. Because once you uh, adopt this family, there is a no uh, possibility of that you cannot grow out there. So that's the amazing thing. So being implemented so many things, you know, like and having so much products, what typically any of the industry, uh, they or the, any of the companies, they look for the outcomes of it. Can you share a couple of examples what other companies have generated? Sure. And, and you know, what I think is interesting is because it's such a, a flexible tool and such a rich set of capabilities, uh, we really are able to support a wide range of manufacturers and distributors across industries. Uh, geographies and uh, all different business sizes. And so just a, just a couple of examples are on this slide. Um, a company, Watsco, is an HVAC distributor in North America. They're, they're doing over 1.4 billion in online sales. And they're doing that across four different brands uh, that they all have on Adobe Commerce. Uh, totally different industry, Yakima Chief Hops. They actually sell hops to, to uh, large breweries, small microbreweries, and so forth, uh, they have been able to use the platform to move about 70% of their U.S. sales online. So it's a much more efficient process and really has freed up their uh, sales force to focus on, you know, building those deeper customer relationships as opposed to processing orders and things like that. Uh, and then one last one is HP. Uh, they use, uh, they're using a single instance of Adobe Commerce to run sites across 16 countries. Uh, and they're selling, uh, what I think is interesting here, they're selling to both consumers and businesses. Uh, and they're able to create great experiences for both of those audiences while also allowing their different countries, different regions to really uh, localize the solution to meet their market needs. So um, just a wide range uh, of customers and industries can really uh, be well served by the platform. Sure, you know, like your HP's example does really place out the Kevin's requirement that, okay, how we can have a unified platform of a B2B and B2C, but still providing a significant difference of functionalities and uh, customer experience to them as well. Now, I would like to go to Chintan as well. Chintan, as we know, you might have implemented thousands of B2B solutions. So can you share a couple of your examples that what outcomes that we companies look for after implementing? Sure. I mean, uh, we worked with like, you know, a few examples which I've mentioned here. So I will just take a deep dive into it. MBT shoes, which is like, you know, they are into fashion and accessories, mainly into footwear across 17 different countries with uh, like you know maybe around 20 different uh, operational sites some of them are on a b2b on certain countries certain countries they are b2c multi-language multi-currencies somewhere they are selling on store somewhere they are only selling online 
somewhere they are only doing a b2b type of sales and somewhere or they are doing marketplace as well so that is where like you know that entire solution was implemented using adobe and then adobe was at a core from a main site point of view and the architecture was the multi site architecture so we have a us operation which is us.mbt.com au operation which is au.mbt.com malaysia and china which is like you know my.mbt.com uh in uh, europe we have germany and uh, in spain so these are like you know the different countries has been handled tool plus is again a different example they are based out of connecticut and uh, there they have a physical stores they are into hardware tooling they and they have a three different physical stores plus they are online plus they do lot of sales on the marketplaces so that is where like you know that entire adobe has helped us in such a way that adobe commerce has been implemented in such a way that one is that it is integrated with the marketplace so that all your product are pushed easily to the marketplace and all your orders are coming back to the uh, platform so you don't you don't need to go back to the marketplace again and again for the order fulfillment second that was done was integrating with the pos so that like you know that if some of the people wanted to go to the physical stores and wanted to do a purchase it was easy and then they had three different websites b2c b2b and then they had a certain brands which wanted a very specific website in a certain way only and which was easily possible with this adobe single site multi site architecture so that was something that we implemented and zafco is one of the great example they are like you know leading tire manufacturer they own armstrong in the us as the tire brand and ztex in middle east they have around 25 countries operation they run sap in the back end from a erp point of view and they were looking at a b2c and a b2b websites and we suggested them adobe commerce and they were looking at hybris at that point of time as well and we suggested them why adobe and how it can benefit from a long term point of view and how you can do it with this multi site architecture and the multi country multi currency and easily it can be coming back to the sap and the integrating with sap can happen so yeah that was something that was unique experience that we able to develop with uh, suites like adobe suites and adobe commerce platform so yeah i mean these are couple of examples and i mean there are many more which are definitely available on our website under the case study and portfolio section but yes the tool has helped us a great way adobe to, to implement our customers on a b2c and a b2b front to give them the best of the platform at the quickest possible way and most important thing that in the digital journey that you want something which is flexible and scalable so flexibility is something which comes with that open source architecture and scalability is something that as you are increasing your business as you are increasing your country of operation as you are increasing your different brands you can do multi site architecture so that has been amazing with adobe commons amazing you know i like think just couple of minutes you have shown variety of the industries and multiple technological use cases as well you covered you know like multi site you covered sap you covered you know like uh, multiple locations that's amazing set of things that you have done so i would now uh, would like to thank you uh, to all of you three guys for joining us today and i would like to open things to our questions to our audience uh, it was a great piece of that okay combination like the adobe family that we have seen that okay we have a business we have a technical and we have a products as well so it really helped that uh, to make make out a mixtures and get uh, at one stop shop information for everybody out there so thank you so much for all joining us so we do have a couple of questions uh, into our live chat and then we have a couple of them from our linkedin forums as well so i would like to start with you uh, shannon that's one person has specifically asked for you that did you work with any of the manufacturing industry and how the adobe commerce can help into manufacturing b2b processes great i think i may have missed the beginning of the question can you say it one more time please now, have you worked with any kind of a oh. manufacturing industry and how sure. the adobe commerce help with the ma manufacturing industry b2b commerce Sure. Oh, we have a, a huge number of manufacturers um, at, that are customers, and um, we 
deal with both industrial manufacturing as well as uh, consumer good manufacturing. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the, the common things across both of those groups is the desire to have a, a buyer portal that is really easy to use. And so I, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the benefits for uh, customers that, you know, once you've set up a kind of a, that purchasing portal, uh, customers can come in, buy at their convenience anytime, day or night. Um, they can also easily come in and manage their account. They can see their purchasing trends. Uh, they can check on orders, they can access old invoices, uh, they can manage their buyers within their organization, uh, they can also do returns. Um, we have other customers who often will customize that portal experience to include other information uh, like, you know, access inform information about warranties um, and so forth. Uh, maybe add a knowledge base in there so people can get questions answered. So um, that is a, a, a really common use case with uh, manufacturers. On the consumer goods manufacturer side, we also are seeing a lot of them are doing a direct to consumer, direct to end user selling. And so uh, our B2C capabilities come into play there as well. Uh, and that the ability to do both B2B and B2C with the same platform uh, is a really powerful combination. Perfect. Thank you so much for such insights. Uh, we have one question from Robert. He mentions about how digital platform can help in the post-purchase activities. So I guess Kevin could be the right person to answer this because he might have handled this as well many times. So Kevin, any comments from your end? Yeah, I mean, I think in post-purchase activities, you're talking about, you know, customer service, customers having an issue either um, tracking their order um, or they received the wrong order or there's a problem they want to do a return. So you need to do an RMA. So the right digital platform, um, especially Adobe Commerce as being, you know, the, the platform we're talking about today, um, they really simplify the post-purchase activities by A, including a lot, of, a lot of those services built into the platform. Um, and then, you know, it also being open source and connecting so well to uh, other technologies, um, you know, it really helps you, for example, you know, let's say you use Zendesk as a, as a customer service tool that integrates seamlessly with Adobe Commerce and provides you, you know, a really easy way to manage tickets and uh, manage requests and manage chats and things of that nature. So, um, with all of the things that Adobe does natively and including to everything that they connect to outside of the platform, it really helps to streamline your activities. Um, Adobe is also excellent at uh, allowing you to create these knowledge bases and. Um, being able to cue people to those knowledge bases based on keywords and, you know, giving them a lot of self-service activities as well. And then Shannon touched on it earlier, you know, a lot of, I find a majority of the post-purchase activities are remedied just simply by having people log into their profile and seeing everything that's available in their dashboard. That usually answers most of their questions. Got it. Perfect. That's really answer the question. Uh, we have another question from our LinkedIn forum. It's about how the PWA is impacting uh, the user experiences. So, Shannon, would you like to share uh, your thoughts on this? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the the real value in PWA, or I mean, there's there are multiple multiple dimensions there, but some of the real value um, comes in the experience. Uh, from experiences. So first off, you're going to see better performance, you know, faster performance. Uh, it's going to have kind of more of that app-like feel to it. Um, I'd say you also get, at, you know, you can also still continue to use that uh, web application even when you have kind of poor connectivity for or bandwidth issues, things like that. So that's a great experience. There's also the opportunity to really uh, also do some integrations with the phone functionality so that you could, for example, build in uh, a barcode scanner, right, to be able to uh, add a product to cart or scan uh, a tag on a, on a, a product that's out in the field to be able to look up warranty information, things like that. So there's some real interesting kind of opportunities to not only just have a great web experience, but also do some integration with the phone functionality to kind of take it a step further. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like we're just kind of, you know, 
just kind of barely kind of uh, kind of skimming the surface at this point and what we'll be able to do with that with those that technology in terms of improving the buyer experience when mobile you got it got it. Uh, the next question we have is how to provide custom pricings and discount to different companies so i guess kevin you might have already implemented this right so if you can just share a very quick glimpse on it uh, yeah, I mean, with Adobe Commerce, it's it's really simple for us. What we do is we simply are able to assign customers to what we call customer groups. And then based on that customer group, they'll have, you know, their own price list and their own pricing rules. So it's really as simple as just assigning your companies to the proper group. Uh, then when they log in, they're going to see their pricing and their their sale pricing and discounts, how you have it set up just for them. And they're the only ones who will see that. You know, Adobe takes it a step further too with Page Builder, where they can see the products uh, that you want them to see and widgets you want them to see, and really customized experience. But uh, to your specific question, Kathy, yeah, just create groups and assign the rules, and it really very simple with Adobe Commerce. Perfect. Thank you for answering this. The next question from Joseph is: What are the keys to success of B2C e-commerce in Nigerian market. So Chintan, would you like to take this? Sure. I mean, I mean, entire world is going through digital and uh, Nigeria or Africa is no different in that. And uh, we have seen as a company being into a global operation in multiple countries that every country is getting into digital world. And it's all about the matter of time when they are into. And do you really want to become the forefront of that or you want to become the last person to take that type of leap but otherwise yes i mean a b2c market success in nigeria is going to be the key success is going to be the mobile usage in nigeria is amazing uh, so you need to make sure that your app uh, or the website is the mobile enabled or it has the mobile feature capability second is that the consumer love to purchase online and it's all about the delivery and the pricing maybe initially they will not trust the payment solution so you can look at the like you know cash on delivery type of thing to start up with just to build up the confidence and then go grow from there just this is just from a marketing point of view just to start the market and uh, like you know if i look at uh, south africa if i look at nigeria if i look at kenya if i look at ghana overall in that belt I mean, every country has exploded into digital. In fact, we are getting so many inquiries from Nigeria for developing the commerce solution and all. And I think Adobe also has some of the great uh, success stories for a couple of big uh, marketplace implementation done on Adobe platform in uh, Kenya or at least in Nigeria. Yeah. yeah, we always see Nigeria as one of the most developing country out there. And as you mentioned, you know, like the online payment, so there, uh, majority things happens that okay mobile pesa and mpay kind of a things okay. that is happening into nigeria which plays a very vital role into digital transactions so joseph uh, this makes you know like uh, a bit of it and we'll be talking more about with you directly on about that okay what are the different things you can do for the successful b2c implementations out there so uh, i would like to uh, take this as a uh, Final uh, end of our session, and uh, Dwanit, we will take up your questions later on uh, on our one on one sessions. Uh, I would really thank you uh, to Shannon, Kevin, and Chintan to join us and spend your time with us and provide such an amazing insight to your respective uh, uh, like specializations out there. Thank you so much for joining in and have a uh, great rest of your day. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Thanks a lot. All right, thank Thanks, you. Shannon. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Thank Bye. you, Chenton. Thanks, Shannon. Thank Maharshi. Thank you.